Okay, happy Monday, and it's Mocha Don is right back at you. I'm Mocha Don, and today we have a quick update regarding the Supreme Court ruling and uh, the Trump case where the Colorado Supreme Court booted him off the ballot. This ruling is going to apply to all states, not just Colorado. We're going to go and take a quick look at it and cut right to the chase. And there it is. Uh, basically, uh, I'm just going to go to the final ruling and then we'll talk some more about it. It is 9-0. All members of the court agree. That's it. All members of the court agree with the result. Uh, there are some opinions that are um, giving different reasoning, but it's a 9-0 decision in favor of Donald Trump. Donald Trump has won this case. And basically, I'll just read what it says. It says all nine members of the court agree with that result, which is that the Supreme Court of Colorado's ruling cannot stand. Um, our colleagues writing separately further agree with many of the reasons this opinion provides for reaching it. See blah blah blahs joint opinion of Sotomayor, Kagan, and Jackson. See also the opinion of Barrett. So far as we can tell, they object only to our taking into account the distinctive way Section 3 of the Constitution works and the fact that Section 5 vests in Congress the power to enforce it. These are not the only reasons the states lack power to enforce this particular constitutional provision with respect to federal offices, but they are important ones. And it is the combination of all the reasons set forth in this opinion, not as some of our colleagues would have it, just one particular rationale that resolves this case. In our view, each of these reasons is necessary to provide a complete explanation for the judgment the court unanimously reaches. The judgment of the Colorado Supreme Court is reversed. The mandate shall issue forthwith. So, Donald Trump will be on the ballot in all 50 states. Individual states cannot make separate decisions about whether or not a candidate gets to appear on their ballot based on the uh, Article 3 insurrection claims. Now, just cruising back through this to see what their reasoning was, it, it's, it's pretty clear, and we can kind of just cut to the chase on that too, that uh, it is Congress that has long given effect to Section 3 with respect to would-be or existing federal office holders. Shortly after ratification of the amendment, Congress enacted the Enforcement Act of 1870. That act authorized federal district attorneys to bring civil actions in federal court to remove anyone holding non-legislative office, federal or state, in violation of Section 3, and made it holding or attempting to hold office in violation of Section 3 a federal crime. The crimes that are in Federal law. Uh, in the years following ratification, the House and Senate exercised their unique powers under Article 1 to adjudicate challenges contending that certain prospective or sitting members could not take or retain their seats due to Section 3. And it points you to all that. They're talking mostly about House members. But then they get to the really important part, which is that, moreover, Permitting state enforcement of Section 3 against federal office holders and candidates would raise serious questions about the scope of that power. Section 5 limits congressional legislation enforcing Section 3. To comply with that limitation, Congress must tailor its legislative scheme to remedying or preventing the specific conduct the relevant provision prohibits. And they cite a Florida case. Section 3, unlike other provisions of the 14th Amendment, proscribes conduct of individuals. It bars persons from holding office after taking 
a qualifying oath, and then engaging in insurrection or rebellion. Nothing more. The congressional legislation enforcing Section 3 must, like the Enforcement Act of 1870, reflect congruence and proportionality between preventing or remedying that conduct and the means adopted to that end. It also says, neither were the respondents are aware of any other legislation by Congress to enforce Section 3. And, and then really the key point and the one that Trump's attorneys made, any state enforcement of Section 3 against federal office holders and candidates, though, would not derive from Section 5, which confers power only to the Congress. As a result, such state enforcement might be argued to sweep more broadly than congressional enforcement could under our precedents. But the notion that the Constitution grants the states freer reign than Congress to decide how Section 3 should be enforced with respect to federal offices is simply implausible. And then it talks about the various ways that the states could screw that up. It says a state-by-state -state resolution of the question whether Section 3 bars a particular candidate for president from serving would be quite unlikely to yield a uniform answer consistent with the basic principle that the president represents all of the voters in the nation. So conflicting state outcomes concerning the same candidate could result, <laughs> we've seen that, right? Uh, not just from d differing views of the merits, but from variations in state law governing the proceedings that are necessary to make Section 3 disqualification determinations. Basically, he's saying, they're saying the states could do different things. Some states might allow a Section 3 challenge to succeed based on a preponderance of the evidence, while others might require a heightened showing. Certain evidence like the congressional report on which the lower courts uh, relied on here might be admissible in some states, but inadmissible hearsay in others. Disqualification might be possible only through criminal prosecution, as opposed to the expedited civil proceedings in particular states. Indeed, in some states, unlike Colorado or Maine, where the Secretary of State recently issued an order excluding the former President Trump. Yeah, they're basically doing away with that, too. Procedures for excluding an ineligible candidate from the ballot may not exist at all. The result could well be that a single candidate would be declared ineligible in some states, but not in others, based on the same conduct and perhaps the same factual record. The patchwork that would likely result from state enforcement would sever the direct link that the framers found so critical between the national government and the people of the United States as a whole. So basically, all of these state challenges against Trump are garbage. They're gone. Trump will be on all of the ballots. Even this most recent Illinois attempt to remove him from the ballot is not going to stand President Trump, in this case, has completely prevailed. President Trump wins this one. That's it for this case. The next Supreme Court case on President Trump is going to be the immunity case. It seems pretty clear that President Trump and all presidents have immunity for acts which are within the bounds of their executive authority within the purview of the president. Obviously, a president can't shoot the maid for fun and say, no, nah, no, nah, I'm president. No, that won't work. But within his duties as the chief law enforcement officer of the United States, the chief executive of the United States, the president is going to have broad immunity. And when that decision comes out, that is going to drive the left absolutely batshit. They are going to go nuts. And they shouldn't because Barack Obama literally killed innocent U.S. citizens on purpose. 
he could be charged with murder. There's no statute of limitations on murder. God only knows what charges they could come up with George W for George W. Bush. And, and Joe Biden is vulnerable to a million different charges. We don't want our presidents to be involved in litigation and criminal proceedings unless they are impeached and convicted in the Senate by a two-thirds majority, 67 votes in the Senate. I don't want to see that happen to Democrat presidents. I certainly don't want to see it happen to Donald Trump. This has been a very unfair process. So the left is going to lose on that one as well. The Supreme Court will, will draw the boundaries of that immunity. So we don't know where they will draw those boundaries, but they will draw boundaries on that immunity. And, and that's going to determine how much of the Washington, D.C. case and the Georgia cases are dismissed. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, God bless. Thanks for coming. And uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. We need your help. We're a new channel. We need your help very much. Please like, comment, and subscribe. That's the big one. And you have a wonderful day. God bless.